Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. Today I'm doing a Mangrove Jack's Blueberry Cider. It's uh, recipe number seven. And uh, I'm hoping that you guys would like to follow. Cheers. It's been a while. It has been a little bit of time. I have been uh, worded up online why haven't i done any brews well i have been very busy doing other videos uh you guys have seen them if you've been following the channel um basically the brewing videos or brewery videos have been popping up i did do a mangrove jacks uh beer that was that is ready to go i'm going to do a tasting in my next video uh this one is a mangrove jacks blueberry cider it's a recipe kit from mangrove jacks and i've found that a lot of mangrove jacks especially ciders are quite nice um i have never had a problem with them i have heard from others that there are issues or they've had issues with them the only thing i really don't like about mangrove jacks products is their brew bags i actually don't think they're a great idea uh being that they're pure plastic so it's a, a bit of landfill uh, cans are recyclable so i kind of like them and the other thing is all the product is in the bag. I mean, it's fresh, looks good, uh, stays fresh for longer. But the problem with it, I believe, is I would love to be able to heat this bag up before I open it and soften and thin out the uh, fluid that's in it, especially in the beer kits that they do. Uh, these definitely are a good product, a good way of working with them. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit of a big deal. But I'm happy to do them because they're a quality product. All right, I've got my Titan, my Apollo Titan, I'm going to brew this into, and I'm going to do it temperature controlled today in my temperature controller. We've had some massive, major hot weather, cold weather. It's been like you know, 12 degrees one day, 40 degrees the next. It's just bloody unreal. Um, today is about 28 degrees, 27 degrees. I have a gig this afternoon, so I've got to get, get this done. Uh, and I've been very, very busy, so sorry if I haven't put out enough videos lately. Uh, thanks to Patreon for supplying uh, funds to allow me to buy stuff like this. This was $55 from the local brew shop, and that's about what they're going at at the moment. So just bear in mind, it is an expensive way of doing it, but to buy a slab, which is what, for 24 cans, will cost you like 60 bucks just for a slab. And that's not, this is, makes 23 litres, the slab's about 10 litres. So give, think about that. Anyway, let's do it. Now, some of you have watched my channel and, and have done things with me before in videoing and brewing. Uh, I have a setup here with a water system, which is connected to a food grade hose, a water hose. Firstly, though, what I do normally is flush water through this hose for about, you know, a minute just so or so and water my garden just to get any kind of plastic buildup that might be in the actual water pipe um it probably won't be a problem but i just don't trust plastic so i'll do that and i'll come back so what we're brewing in today is an apollo titan and i have made a video on this of course you guys have seen it uh it's i will actually put a link up here there's a bit of a dent on there um i'll put a link up here for that the Apollo Titan is a stainless steel fermenter that I have passivated. It is right now full of sanitizer, all ready to go for this brew. I'll put that aside, and I won't actually do anything with that until I start getting all this part of it all ready. So what we must do now... Now, oh, we do need to fill up a kettle so we can dissolve our sugars, which I believe I still have... I don't have any sugars. One kilogram of sugar. I haven't got any. I have to stop recording. So I realized I needed dextrose, so I quickly ran out to the local brew shop that was open and grabbed myself a bag of would you believe? Mangrove Jacks. Oh, I hope it is. Dextrose. Ah, I thought it didn't have dextrose then. I thought, what? It's white. It's got to be dextrose. So. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is grab this bag, quickly grab my bottle of sanitizer spray. Hasn't been used for a couple of days. 
spray the packet around where I'm going to cut especially um, because as you know these have been handled by people everywhere in shops factories when it delivered it's got people's fingerprints all over it so you want to make sure you put sanitizer on it as well as the scissors you're going to cut it with look you don't have to if you don't want to but I recommend it what is wrong with this thing well, so I have to clean out that nozzle, I think. Um, yeah, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I recommend doing it uh, if you want a brew that actually works. The other thing I have to do before I even do anything else is actually grab two litres of hot water because we want to be able to dissolve the dextrose. Two litres of hot water. And boil it. So what I'm doing first is boiling two liters of hot of water to make it hot. I was gonna say two liters of hot water, but you can't boil hot water because it's already hot. So it's boiled already. So you need to boil cold water and make it hot. Am I making sense? Probably not. <laughs> and while I'm doing that, um, I'm going to be putting it directly into my Titan. <laughs> this bloke, it has got sanitizer already in it. So I'll give that a bit of a swirl. I, as you've probably seen in, <laughs> sorry, a bit loud. As you might have seen in the videos in the past already, I have done the passivation of this fermenter. So all I need to do now is just clean it with sanitizer. I'll pop the sanitizer back in the sanitary pot that I have. So I don't throw it on the ground outside. So sanitizer. Pour that out. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put gloves on. I normally wear gloves because I have skin problems. So as soon as I pour this out, I will put gloves on. Right, that's empty. Ready to go for my first addition. A couple of tricks I've learned in the past is to actually put your sugars in first. The reason for that is when you pour your sugar into the pot first, you don't get a whole heap of coagulation on the bag, which makes it all What happens is when you pour it in, the hot water pours in on top and it just makes it much easier to mix later. I hope you heard that. Uh, where am I going? This one, that one, pour this into there. So I'm gonna open up while it's boiling. I'm gonna open up my, probably don't have to worry about spraying center this is faulty i've broken it i reckon something's going on spray my bag i probably don't have to do that um i'm boiling it anyway so it's probably not going to harm or cause any trouble or issues so you put hot water and it kills pretty much everything so why am i worried so like i said i'm gonna pour the dextrose into the fermenter just like this We have one kilogram of dextrose. Done. And with that, oh, dextrose all full in there. With that, I will now open this bag and start extracting all the little bits I need to make this brew work. So cut it just below the burn scene or the sealing scene. Open the bag, there's the fluid. Hopefully you can see that in that camera. And on the other side of that chamber are all your bits. So you got your instruction manual, your flavors, that's blueberry flavor by that, yeah, blueberry cider flavor, sweetener, and your yeast. Voila, and the yeast is cider yeast, MO2, and that's all we have. The rest of it is, oh, you can smell the blueberry. Wow, in that, so the, you get the blueberry flavouring, which enhances that flavour, then you've got the smell and strength of the blueberry already in the actual uh, extract. Really good. Kettle's nearly boiled. I'll grab myself a plastic stirring stick. Yeah. I need a new pump. I think this has just had it. Oh. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to look at that and find out why it's not working. Oh, I didn't put the gloves on. What a dingbat. All right. One glove. Kettle's boiled. So we now will pour the hot water in on top of the dextrose. Oh, I don't need the steam going up there. So I'll move this little bot fella over here so you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. This will just pour straight in. That's all the hot water I need. Stirring stick. Now, of course, there was um, leftover sanitizer in there, but the sanitizer is a, a acid base, a food acid based sanitizer. It's very, very di highly diluted, and the actual product that they use to make your sanitizer is a nutrient for yeast. So I think we're not going to have any issues with this at all. That smells nice already. All right, that smells pretty fresh and clean. Um, I'll now pour. It's still stinking hot in there. Uh, how do I do that? I pop that over there. Nope. I'll now pour the extract in. It's fairly liquidy, so that's good. I'm going to. Oh, look, I haven't measured anything again. So I don't know how much I'm putting in. Oh, I did it last time too. There is a gauge on here that tells you the depth and the measurement of water, but I'm going to have to um, calculate what I've just used. So I used two litres of water, some dextrose, which will take up about 300 ml or so, and this one here is... How much does this take? How much fluid? It just says weight. It doesn't actually give me a fluid dip. Damn. I'm just going to kind of guess it. <laughs> we make mistakes. I forgot about the measurement. Um, just... Oh, the idea, look, this is probably 1.7 litres. Net weight 2.4, so it's probably 1.7 litres to 2 litres. I'm going to suggest that this has probably got about two liters of fluid. I'm going to over exaggerate that. Maybe 1.7. I'm not sure, but I'll go on two liters. So I'll put two liters of water, two liters of this, and some dextrose, which would take up about another 300 grams. So let's say 4.3 liters. I'll fill this up with another, let's say, uh, what will what, what fill it up to? I'll fill it up to an extra to get it to about 18 litres, so I can rinse the bag out. That, that'll do. So what I would guess would be 18 litres, so I need to add another 14 litres, or 13.6, just with water. So I'll calculate that on my machine over here. Oh, you two litres. Well, not 18. Um, I know, it needs to be 23, so we put a bit of blah, 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 blah. I want to bring it under 20. I want to bring it up to 18 litres. I want to add 14 litres about. So we'll bring that down to 14. That should work. This is the easy part. I've got I've got my um fillometer. And that's just gonna fill it up to what I want it to be at. So my I'm guessing the amount of fluid I'm putting in. There is a gauge on the side. I'm not sure how accurate that is. This is a 30 litre vessel and we need 23 litres. So it's going to be fairly right. I reckon pretty close to, once this finishes pouring, I reckon about 18 litres. That, that gives me another five litres to play with to get it to 23 litres. I'll do a four litres. I might make it a little bit stronger. Yeah, I might do it. If I clean that bag out within four litres, I'll be happy with that. As you, should, you all know, you can make mistakes. It's only brewing, it's home brewing. You make mistakes, you learn from mistakes, and you do it better next time. What are we at? We're at 11 litres, so we need three more litres. A lot of foam in there. I should stop in a second. There you go. So I've even felt that was right. So we're, at, we're now at around about 18 litres of fluid. Um, like I said, there's still number five I can put in there. There is a gauge on this. It's on the back here. 
Um, it's in litres and gallons, and that is around about here. So we're, yeah, about 18 litres, I would suggest. Looks about right. So all I need to do now is just finish it off by filling this up. Um, I've got to measure that. Oops. Uh, stop. Clear. Maximum number four litres, to be honest. So now I've set the millimetre to four litres. That's 1.3. Am I going to do this without spilling it? Probably not. Oh my god! Can't put the hose down. One more quick rinse. There it is. That's the uh, that's the maximum amount I'm allowed allowed myself. So it's probably about 23 to 22 liters, and that's all we need. Right. Um, give it a bit of a stir now. Just another thing we need to add to this is a Camden tablet. A half a Camden tablet's enough. Ooh, I've moved everything, haven't I? Uh, over here. Going to put a half a Camden tablet in, and this will this will reduce the amount of chlorine and chloramine I'll end up with at the end of this brew. So we'll just I'll just break it up in there. Probably should have done this with um. Can you see the dog here sitting there? Bloody dog! Probably should have done this before. But this is going to be fine. Now. For, the, for those who have never brewed, a Camden tablet will take out um, chloramine and chlorine, or will just not take it out, but it will neutralize it so it's not there anymore. It becomes part of the Camden. And uh, just to be honest, one Camden tablet is probably a bit too much in 23 litres, um, but it won't hurt if you did that. I do about half, and that seems to work really well for what I'm doing here, and uh, get the best flavours out of it. The Camden tablet pretty much gets rid of that chlorine that... That, um, that builds up and gives you that off flavor when you actually do your brewing. So I'm happy to just use one or half a Camden tablet in the whole brew, and that send, tends to help me out big time. This bloody thing got a bit dirty on this. I'll clean that. There's no nothing else I need to add to that at the moment. Uh, with this kit, basically, I put the yeast in, and I'm going to temperature control this one. Uh, the packet says, on, on the yeast packet, it says ferment at 12 to 28 degrees. Um, so really, it's must. It's what they call must. Um, so you ferment the must down to 20, 12 to 28. So I'm going to do it at about 18 degrees Celsius and leave it there at 18 degrees. Uh, sometimes I recommend doing it at its lowest temperature. Sprinkle directly onto the... On, onto a maximum of 23 litres a, of mass, which is what we're working with, uh, between 12 and 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, ferment within this range. See data sheet website for full description of the rehydration if you want to rehydrate it. Dried yeast, yeast is also fine, blah, blah, blah. It has, um, inside it actually has yeast nutrient already built into the pack, as well as emulsifiers and things like that to make it work. So it should just pretty much go on on its own or start by itself. It is a cider yeast, uh, and it's pretty much ready to go. This is ready to go. The temperature shouldn't be much higher than 28 degrees. If it is, it's not such a big deal. Check that out. If you guys can see that, it might be a bit blurry. Um, and I just have a quick smell. I can smell caramel in there, all kinds of smells. It's really nice, actually. It has an orange tinge to it, too, so it's got to be some sort of flavorings in the yeast packet as well. That's great. Anyway, that is in my fermenter. I will stir it up a little. Uh, the other thing is too, when you put, when you do it this way, you do it straight from the, uh, the town tap. The town tap water is good enough uh, if you get rid of the chlorine from it. You can actually boil the chlorine out, but the chloramine 
is another story. Um, chloramine won't come out that easily, probably won't ever come out really. That's why the Camden tablet seems to work better with that. I've got to fix this, it's terrible. Look at it, it's just terrible. A bit of hair on there from the dog, another bloody dog here. Oh, the other day I had to clean out my pump from my um, my grandfather because it was clogged up with dog hair. Now, some people have mentioned my hair and said, yeah, I'm going to get hair in your bloody beer and all that stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. It, it, my hair's clean. It's not going to hurt the beer. But dog hair, that's a different story. All right, so that's ready to go in the fridge. I'm just going to pop the lid on. I will pressurize this a little just to check the uh, for leaking. Where's the lid? Pressurize it to check for leaking. This is my go-to fermenter from now on. I'm going to be doing this all the time with this fermenter. Oh, the hell. I'm not, I, sh I should take a sample, but <laughs> these are so accurate. I must say, these kits are so accurate. I've been taking samples and then rechecking later, and they've never been different. It's always been the same. So. Regardless of what sample I'm going to take, it's going to start off with 10, what is it, 10, oh, it's in the, in the instruction manual here, which I haven't read yet, I've probably done it all wrong, hang on. Read the instructions guys, don't do what I do. Clean and sanitize, add 3 litres, top of 23, yeah, I'd add 2 litres because it's warm weather. There you go, it says, still I'll check the liquid temperatures between 12, 18 and 24. Um, I don't have a temperature gauge on, but I can feel, oh! Before I forget, I'm going to put my tilt in. I'm hoping it's still got a good battery in it. This bloody thing does not work. <laughs> it doesn't work! What a bloody thing! Oh, I've got a lot of sanitizer on it anyway, so the tilt's there. I'm going to throw that tilt in. I had a long time. It was... What is... Oh, yeah, I sanitize that. This thing's not right. <laughs> Back to you when I get this thing unclogged. What is going on with you? Okay, my pump's buggered. I'm going to sanitize this the, the old way. Back in a sec. You can probably see me over there. I've got that, that bloody camera that I'm using now. <sighs> so I'm just rinsing the tilt with sanitizer. So it's going to go in here. That should activate, providing the battery's still good. I haven't actually, I lost the tilt for a while and finally found it again, so I'm happy with that. All right, so I'm gonna check the gravity in my tilt in a minute with my phone, just to make sure the gravity's right. Like I said, I haven't used this tilt for a while, so I'll get on there while using the app. Okay, I haven't. Uh... Right, it's figured it out already. It's, um, gravity is, I'll probably show you on that one actually. Gravity is 1058, 1057, said 1055 before. So I'd say 1055 it would be at 27.8 degrees Celsius. So it's under 8, 28 degrees, which is fine. The, the yeast said it can do that. Um, so that's our record for now. I'll have to save that. And now I'm going to pop it in the refrigerator. Oh, I've got to check if it leaks. Because I will be pressure remedying. Oh, there's something else I need to talk to you about. I have a Spundy from uh, Keking. They invented this. It's, been a, it's a brilliant product. You probably see my Facebook channel talking about it. This thing is phenomenal. I've washed this one out and I've just quickly put sanitizer on it. You can actually change the pressure. I might show you on that. Change the pressure to whatever pressure you like up to about, what, 30 PSI. Now, what I didn't realize in these is you can actually use a pressure relief valve like that in this end to the pressure you want. If you want to pressure ferment at 10 PSI, you can use a 10 PSI pressure relief valve or PRV. The purple one is 15 PSI, so I won't use them because I want to do it 10 PSI on this one. The blue ones are 10 PSI. So purple 15, blue 10. So I'll try a blue one on here. I'm going to bring that back up to the pressure I want to. I want to bring it to about 15 or 20 PSI. And I'll pop the blue one in. Yeah, that seems to sit in there nice. And we'll bring the pressure back down. This will open and hopefully close at 10 PSI. I'll turn that so I can see it. Well, it's gone past 10 and it hasn't closed. 
So my thought process is saying that it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, we'll scrap that one. We're going to trust the original setup of this one. I was watching uh, a, a stream on YouTube talking about the pressure relief valves and PRVs and the spundies and how they work together. But it hasn't actually worked out the way I thought. So I'll pop this back on. What I've done is just put the original adjustable valve on here, which is um, uh, adjustable, basically. And I'll bring this back up to pressure. I want it 10 PSI, but at the moment I want to bring it down lower. I want to ferment at uh, 2 PSI to let any gases out first. So now it's saying it's at 10, 11... Uh, what do you call it? It was at 11 PSI. So now it's at 10. So at 10 you stop it. Wind in, it stops. And then you just leave it until it starts running again. But I want a pressure ferment at 2 PSI. So I'm going to bring that down. Now we're nearly at 3, 1, 2. That'll loop. It's at 2 now. That's just on. Just. Hang on. I've got to listen. Whoop. That's just under 2. So the, when the pressure comes back up. It should start letting gas out at about 2 PSI, which will hopefully get rid of some of the badder air in the first parts of fermenting. And then when it gets to closer, like in four days, um, three or four days in the fridge, I will increase the pressure to 10 PSI and leave it there until it's finished fermenting. Right, this bloke now is ready for the fridge. Uh, just a quick warning, when you do ferment and use these pressure relief valves as your pressure control, if you do get too much foam, they could clog up the bottom of them and actually cause your pressure to build up immensely uh, until it explodes. So to be aware of that, these things are about 30 PSI compatible. That's it, as far as you can go. I'm now going to tip this into the fridge. Tip it into the fridge. I'm going to drop it in the fridge, put a little temperature control rod in and bring it down to 18 degrees Celsius and leave it there for all that time. Uh, I'll set up a camera so you can see it. Right, you're recording, yep. <sighs> okay. So we've popped the little picture bridge control valve in, uh, control center. I'll just throw it in until it, you know, till about, I reckon if it's there, it'll be about halfway. So I'll just throw it in just like that. And that will sit. Sitting near the crack of the, the door there. That's it. That's that done. This is the temperature controller here. Now I need to rechange that. It's saying it's going up now, see it's 15 degrees. Uh, at target is 20, but we actually want target to be 18. So I'm bringing that from 40. See if you can see what I'm doing there. I'm increasing the whoop too far. Increasing the temperature to 18 degrees, 19, 18, and then hopefully this controller will keep it at 18 degrees all the time. Thanks to Michael Lead, by the way, for uh, giving me this. Absolutely awesome. Now I can monitor that on my camera, on my, on my phone. Anywhere I am, hopefully, if it stays online through my internet that I've got it connected to, hopefully. I have had it work before, but it's never been brilliant. <laughs> um, but it works. So once I'm finished fermenting, I'm going to add some blueberry cider flavours. Uh, they're going into the brew just before I keg it, or might even put it in the keg as I'm transferring. And a half a packet of this sweetener. A whole packet is a bit too sweet for my liking. A uh, half a packet would be perfect for me. And this keeps for quite some time. So next video you see for this is me actually tasting and testing it. Thank you guys for taking the time watching this video. Thank you to my patrons for looking after this channel. My God, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do these videos. Um, you people on YouTube as well, uh, you guys who support me on the members channel uh, area, Thank you very much for your support and all you guys watching this video right to the end. I hope it wasn't too long. Uh, these videos, I try to get 
a bit of information in there to try and help you guys when you do your brewing. And it is Cider Month, so I'm doing the Cider Month tastings, and I'm also doing Cider Month this month. So hopefully this video fits in with that. Cheers, guys. We'll see you on the next one. This one's got the audio, so...